Hi and welcome to my. Hi and. Hi and what? God, I can't do hi. Hi and welcome to my channel. I'm Simon and today I am back with my August book haul. And if you like a book haul, this is a pretty big one because it's a whole month's worth. Look at me, I'm rolling my sleeves up to get ready for it. So, as always, I'm going to talk about books from publishers first, then move on to books that I bought myself, which is the bigger of the two piles, which I'm always pleased to see. Although that said, whilst I do like um, making sure that I'm also adding and supporting to the industry financially, I really, really, really want to get back to using my library a lot more. I work in libraries, but because they're all around the country, I can't have a membership card because I might not go back for like six months or whatever. So uh, that could leave me with some serious fines. Anyway, let's get on with the books. First of which, going through books from publishers, is Magpie by Elizabeth Day, which was actually out yesterday. I have realised when literary thrillers are done well, they are my favourite kind of books because they've got a plot which I really, really enjoy. They'll have fully formed and generally fully flawed characters, which I really, really love often an unreliable narrator or two maybe and um yeah there's an atmosphere they've always got a real atmosphere to them and that is very much the case with magpie i thought this was brilliant it's about um, a young woman marissa who meets a man called jake they fall in love they move in together they start trying for a baby and then they take on a logic called kate who takes far too much interest in jake and the baby they're trying to have and i shall say no more than marissa wants to know why and we as the reader do, and hopefully now you do, so that you can run out and buy it, because it is brilliant. That was almost like a haul and a wrap-up all in one. Interesting way to start. So then we have You Will Never Be Forgiven by Mary South, which is a collection of short stories. Um, and I'm really, really intrigued by this one because I've heard amazing things about it. And I really like the fact that when you flick through, some of it's written like, you can't see that, but some of it's written in like script. Um, some of it's written in almost like a Q and a um, Yeah, it's all quite unusually done. Um, and yeah, it apparently looks at technology and humans. So I'm intrigued and I think that cover is amazing. Also, I should say, if you're new here, I'm dreadful for reading blurbs in advance. I tend to get like a savage idea about what a book is about and it might not be right at all. Uh, then on to another short story collection, which looks like it's gonna be Creepy As, and that is Dead Relatives by Lucy McKnight Hardy, who wrote Watershore Refusal, which was an amazing gothic, creepy literary novel. I think these are gothic, creepy literary short stories that are out aptly in October. Um, so. Uh, perfect time for reading them. I'm really, really looking forward to seeing how she does concise short fiction um, as I enjoyed her novel very much. So they've got that one. Speaking of spooky books, I was very kindly sent uh, The House in the Woods by Yvette Fielding from Anderson Press. I did ask for this one. I love Yvette Fielding. I love Most Haunted. She was my generation of Blue Pizza presenter. Um, so yeah, I, I'm a big, big fan. And this sounds really, really good. It sounds like a mix between um, sort of most haunted and also um oh my god i can't think of the show that i absolutely love strange things uh, there it came to me um and i'm intrigued to get to it. i mean even the bike is a little bit uh, the bike even the cover is a little bit strange things with the bikes on so yeah i'm uh, really keen to read this i wanted to read this last month but didn't get around to it so i'll definitely be reading it this month before it comes out at the end of the month so i can tell you all about it in a wrap-up in due course then one of my most anticipated non-fiction books of the year because i absolutely bloody love the podcast I would say it's one of my top favourites, along with Elizabeth Day's How to Fail. Um, and that is Did I Say It Out Loud by Fee Glover and Jane Garvey. It's the proof. There you go, that's side. Um, and this is, um, it, I don't know if you listen to the podcast, fortunately, but I absolutely love it. And basically, um, Fee and Jane sit and just talk about, um, as the subtitle of this is, Notes on the Chuff of Life. So absolutely anything and everything. And they'll often have a guest on who works in broadcasting. They're both in broadcasting. And it's just one of the best podcasts. And it always brings me joy. It always makes me laugh. Sometimes it's very moving unexpectedly. They're very frank and open and direct and all those things that I love. And in this um, series of essays, basically, because um, I read this one. And interestingly, actually, I haven't included this or Magpie in my wrap-up for August when I read them 
because they're going to be in Frank Magazine's book pages when it relaunches. So I'll tell you even more about it there in due course. Anyway, um, they're told in essays, alternating essays. So it'll be Jane and Fee, then Jane and Fee, etc. On different subjects such as Christmas, um, good hair days, divorce, why you should refuse a limoncello, um, why you should never wear an acrylic jumper. There's all sorts from like some really deep topics to some really just really funny moments in life that you really get because you've had them if you know what I mean anyway each one has an essay but at the end of that essay the other one has the opportunity to respond and it's just brilliantly done and I loved it and they're going on tour later this year and they may have a host you might know for possibly three of the events that's all I'm saying and um, then I got perfect for the forthcoming autumn well I'm in my head it is autumn now frankly and I've learned that in um the Gaelic calendar it's autumn from August. I'm like, I need to be Gaelic. Anyway, um, this is The Spirit Engineer by um, AJ West. Um, you can't see this is the proof. It's there on the side. And um, yeah, it's uh, his debut novel. Um, it's all about a spirit engineer. So it's all about ghostly spirits and shenanigans. It's historical fiction, which I really, really love. So I've got real high hopes for this and I'm very, very excited about it. It's coming out in October when all the spooky books are coming out. I should say this is coming out at the end of September. Then this short story collection really, really intrigues me. Um, I, partly because I just love the proof cover. And I actually think the proof cover, I'm sorry to say this sector, is better than the finished cover. Um, it's sat in November and it's Things We Do Not Tell the People We Love by Huma Qureshi. And um, yeah, Things We Do Not Tell People We Love exposes the silences in families and the parts of ourselves we rarely reveal. I mean, instantly, I just want to read it. And apparently, actually, The Jam Maker was winner of Harper's Bazaar Short Story Prize 2020, a collection of short stories about mothers and daughters, children lost, unborn, grown up, grown apart, and the distance between lovers. I think I'm going to love this. Just got a feeling. Might read that very soon. Um, well, it depends, actually, because I'm doing Bookopoly this month, so it depends if the dice say that I should. Um, then, Bloomsbury sent me two books, one of which I hadn't heard of, and when they sent me an email saying, what did I read? I was like, yes, but I'd also read to like... I'd also read to like. I'd also like to read the next book, which I'll talk about shortly. And um, the one they had sent me an email about was Abundance, Nature in Recovery by Karen Lloyd. And it is just that, a book, a nonfiction book, all about nature and how it is trying to recover, how we can help it recover and what more we can do. I really want to read a lot more nonfiction about the planet, what we are doing to it, but mainly how we can help it and the hope um, going, and the hope we should have going forward. Because I think sometimes we can get all too lost in the despair and gloom and I don't think that always helps it's about trying to find those just little moments of rays of light of hope within everything anyway went off on a tangent there slightly um I loved Dara McNulty's diary of a young naturalist please 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 go and see the video that me and Melanie did on that for book group I'll link it down below that's why I'm pointing down there um because one there's a hilarious heckling parrot but two it's such an important book and I want everyone to read it I think you can probably tell it's going to be one of my books of the year. But yeah, anyway, so I'm hoping that this is uh, similar and I get lots out of that one. The one that I really, really wanted and asked for on top of that one um, is I Belong Here, A Journey Along the Backbone of Britain by Anita Sethi. And this um, starts after Anita um, had a really horrible instance of racism at her. And it's how she then decides to travel around the north of England, sort of to embrace the landscape that she's from and look at the nature of it and yeah sort of finding her place um and looking at her cultural background and her family background and all those things that's what I believe it's about I could be wrong but um yeah I'm really 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 intrigued to read it so there we go and then I had no idea this author had a new book out and I loved her debut novel so 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 much um it was called Petit Mort and it was just brilliant it was one of the best historical fictions I'd read in a long time this is all of you every single one by Beatrice Hitchman I do not know what this is about at all I'm going to go into it completely blind I'm just so excited because I hoped she would have a second novel and now she does but it's been a while so yeah I'm thrilled about that really really thrilled that that arrived another book that you may just see in the Frank magazine <laughs> books pages when it relaunches is Beautiful Country by 
Crian Julie Wang, a memoir of an undocumented childhood. And this is, I'm going to say it, one of my favourite non-fiction books of the year. It's actually I'm under embargo, so I can't say too much about it. I don't know how I'm going to deal with that in a wrap-up, because what I'm going to do is stick the Frank books onto an August wrap-up. Maybe the last one I'll do, actually, um, because I want you to go and read my thoughts, and then I can tell you to go back if you've missed them or something anyway um yeah i um i thought this was phenomenal this is all about um, a family who well basically the this kind of sums it up in china she was the daughter of professors in brooklyn her family is illegal and when her mother is ill um everything comes to the fore that they're living there illegally and then we follow as a young girl comes to terms with all of that but also how she, with such endurance and hope, hope's a word I'm using a lot and something that I'm really, really loving in books at the moment, probably because sometimes I feel quite hopeless, um, but it's just such a visceral account of what it's like to be in it. And also it's a, the sort of book that I'm doing a wrap up. I'm not going to say anymore. It's brilliant. That's all I'll say. So there we go. And um, then a book that's coming out in 2022, January, is, you can't see it from the cover, but this is The Maid by Nita Prose. Um, and um, it's a Harper Fiction event publication. So just to put you there, put that out there, put you there, put that out there. Oh, words. Um, and um, yeah, this is getting so much buzz. I think the film rights have already been sold. I think it might already be in production. And um, it's, I love this. It says, I'm your maid. I know so much about you, your secrets, your dirty laundry. But what do you know about me? I think I'm going to really, really, really like this. But ultimately from publishers is this collection of poems and um, the Natural History Museum's poetry book, Wonder, uh, which is curated by Anna Sampson. And I would like to read more poetry. These are, oh God, I've just opened that, look at that. It's a poem in the shape of a bird. That's really, really lovely. Oh, and um, yeah, it's all about poems about nature and the wonder of nature. And I think it looks wonderful. See what I did there? Uh, and last but not least from publishers, last but not least, but certainly the biggest and the chunkiest, I mean, look at that, is The Sisters Now by Gavin McRae. Now I, liked his debut novel uh, Mrs Engels. I know Eric of Lonesome Reader absolutely loved it and we talked about it quite a lot at the time. Um, this I'm really really intrigued by because it's all about China's cultural revolution but I think it's also about, um, oh there's, it involves China's cultural revolution, Europe's sexual revolution and then it's also about the fates of two families amongst all of that, which sounds pretty much Simon Catnip. Um, and actually I've realized I haven't used any of my chance cards yet on Bookopoly and I might add this because I've put some big chunkers on there so that I get to them. So yeah, it looks at like the sisters now, well, obviously from the title. Um, and um, yeah, I'm really, really intrigued by it. So we have that, I've just spotted this. Something random on the back of that book. Let's all move on. Then, before I'm to books that I bought myself, a book that I was gifted, and uh, my I've been fil filming, I've been recording a podcast for BBC Sounds that comes out in October called Turn Up for the Books. And my producer Sally said that she thought I would absolutely love this, and I hadn't heard of it. She loved it. It's Melissa Ginsburg's The House Uptown. I don't know anything about it. I love the cover. I'm hoping it's all about family secrets and stuff. Um, but I don't think it's, oh, 14-year-old uh, Ava has already lived through every child's worst nightmare and now she must try to survive in a strange house of secrets. That does sound like my kind of thing. So I'll have to head to this one soon, actually. Very, very excited for that one. Oh, I don't know what, what part to put it on. Books I bought myself. Now, if you're one of my patrons, you'll have seen some of these already because quite a few of them I bought in Bath. I don't know if I've got them in the actual right order that I bought them. So we'll see what we can do. First up, when I went to Toppings, I got um, A Sunday in Ville d'Avry by Dominique Barbaris. Uh, this is about two sisters in France who live, one lives in the city, one lives in the countryside. They have a strange tension between them and it's about a Sunday where they meet. I would like to do a reading vlog at some point about books about sisters and siblings. So this is one that I was thinking of. Also, I bought quite a lot of books by Women in Translation in August, because it was Women in Translation month. I didn't actually read any books by Women in Translation. And this isn't an excuse because I should be reading them more anyway, but I do think with things like Women in Translation month and Pride month and Black History month, it's almost like they're the times you have to read all those books and like it's almost a bit forgotten the rest of the time. And I would like my reading diet or menu, whatever you want to use the term for, basically something to do with food. Um, I would like to have that sort of inter 
intertwined with everything all the time, if that makes sense. Not just at specific times. I hope that made sense. Anyway, um, then at toppings I also bought, I have mixed these up really badly. Um, oh, it's got a book, it's got a foodie title, Fondue by A.K. Blakemore, who won the Desmond Elliott Prize, which I judged this year for um, The Man Tree Witches. This is her, uh, I don't know if it's her first or second collection of poems, and I wanted to get to that. On our um, long list, we had, I always worry that I say re this really, really badly, Dorian Negrofa. Um, and this is one of her poetry collections. So it's really interesting that I have noticed I really love novels by poets. Um, and I don't know why that is, how that is, or what's going on there, but it's just a true fact. Then at Persephone Books, I bought myself Tea with Mr. Rochester by Francis Towers, which I discovered afterwards is a boy because of the Mr. Rochester thing, Jane Eyre, etc. But actually, I think it's a short story collection and I've never read a short story collection of Persephone books. I was trying to read them in order, but um, I haven't got around to it. I think maybe that doesn't help me read them. I think it sometimes sort of holds me back a bit because I'm like, oh, if I'm not in the mood for the next one, I don't head to a Persephone book until I am in the mood for that one. Um, then we have the Hopkins Manuscript by R.C. Sheriff. Now, um, I used to host a podcast called Readers and my second co-host, Thomas, um, raved about this so many times to me and I finally bought it. It's about what happens when people realise the moon is heading to Earth and it is going to cause a horrific impact and the end of times and how people deal with it. So, yeah, it's a bit of a chunk, but I think this is going to be really, really, really interesting. It makes me think of that book that I really love, uh, Age of Miracles, um, which I thought was phenomenal by Karen Thompson Walker. Then I got um, in, what was the other bookshop that I went to? The bookshop was Mr B's um, and I really really loved it. I'm going to be in Bristol and Bath quite a lot more so I'm going to be heading to these bookshops quite a lot. Um, I got Rotten Days in Late Summer by Ralph Webb which is a collection of poetry that I think looks at working class and men um, so I'm intrigued for that. I thought this might actually be a really good book to read. Wow I'm speaking suddenly really, really quickly. Um, I thought this might be a really good book to read um, as like a partner read to Benjamin Myers' Male Tears which deals with similar themes. Then I got and I tried to find this everywhere and I was so thrilled when I saw it. The Bread the Devil Need by Lisa Allen Agostini. I don't know what this is about. I know it's set in the Caribbean and I want to read a lot more Caribbean fiction because I've really enjoyed the Caribbean fiction that I've read so far this year. And um, I saw it on Book of Since Instagram page and I hadn't heard about it anywhere else. And I was like instantly really, really intrigued. So looking forward to getting to that one into your course. And another book in translation about sisters is Three Summers by Margarita Libaka, oh, I'm reading it sideways, that doesn't help. Margarita Liberaki. This is a Greek novel, um, and I think it's about three sisters over three summers. And I tried the first uh, page and I loved the language so much. I was like, oh, I have to read this. And it's, it's really quite like, I don't read books aloud on the channel, but I'm going to often, but I'm going to for this. That summer we bought big straw hats. Maria's had cherries around the rim. Infantas had forget-me-nots and mine had poppies as red as fire. I just loved, instantly loved it. So I'm looking forward to heading to that. Uh, then when I was in Halifax, I went to an amazing bookshop there. Uh, I want to say the book corner, and I don't think that's right. Anyway, I'll link it down below. Um, and I picked up The Disaster Tourist by Young Cohen. I wanted to read this because I love the subtitle, Wish You Weren't Here. This has also recently won a crime award and that really, really intrigued me, uh, or was shortlisted for the CWA Dagger, I think. Um, so yeah, that intrigued me and I want to head to that one. And then also I got All Men Want to Know by Nina Boreu. And this is about a woman who's coming to terms with her sexuality. Um, I think it's when she moves from Algeria to France um, and it's told in vignettes, which I absolutely love as a style. So I thought, right, I'm going to grab that. And like I said, get much more women in translation into my reading diet full stop. Um, I can't remember where I bought this. I think this might have been in London, possibly. Um, I got Reputation by Lex Croucher, which I've been wanting to read for ages. I love Lex's channel. I think um, they're fantastic. And I think this is going to be like almost Bridgerton, but I dare I say better. Um, and I'm just really, really, really excited. This isn't about Regency, just got a little more rebellious. So I was saving this to read for a 
uh, themed reading vlog I was going to do, but I haven't got around to it. And then Lauren, everyone in the books, has raved about this and it made me want to read it. Although I then saw a really interesting uh, post by, and I can't remember who did it, where they questioned one, how one character is used to kind of make sure that there are more, um, well, characters of colour in the book. So that's made me do a bit, uh, but we'll see. It's The Appeal by uh, Janice Hallett. And me and Pip were actually talking about doing this as a crime time read when crime time does eventually come back. I also picked up Come Let Us Sing Anyway by Leonie Ross, who's, um, I always want to call it Popper Show, even though that isn't the name of it here in the UK, which is ridiculous. But I absolutely loved this one, Sky Day. I thought it was phenomenal. It's one of my favourite books of the year. And uh, I wanted to read her short story collection, so I grabbed it. Uh, one of my favourite authors, I've mentioned him already in this video, is Benjamin Myers, or Ben Myers. Um, and this book I found when I was in um, Hull, and I went book shopping with Becca from Becca and the Books. And we actually went to... Wrecking Ball Press's shop and I got The Book of Fuck which is I think it might be Ben's debut I'm not sure but I'm just really really I've been wanting to get my hands on this forever because I love his writing so much and now I have it that said I love his writing so much I haven't read his latest short story collection yet shame on me also about myself Jess Phillips everything you really need to know about politics because I don't feel like I'm educated on politics enough and would like to be more so and then the penultimate bookshop that I went to this month was now did I get these in foils or did I get them in London Review of Books I think I got them in London Review of Books um I got Mrs Caliban by uh, Rachel Ingalls um, and this is a book that they are at the Faber republishing it kind of vanished off the um, scene but um, it's meant to be amazing it's about a uh, woman who turns up one day and there is a frog man sort of um, almost like God sat at a kitchen table and it's what someone from there I then bought Since I Laid My Burden Down by Brontes Pennell I have got Brontes's short story collection to read I've heard it's just brilliantly written but quite naughty a bit smutty and a bit filthy and that sounds like my kind of thing and another book in translation um, is Almond by Won Pung Son and I've seen Matthew Sharapa rave about this and when I saw it in fact so these two I got from um London Review Books this one I actually got from Waterstones not foils at all um and yeah I've seen Matthew Sharapa rave about it and again I want to read more fiction in translation by women and so I'm going to and then penultimately, uh, the first of two books from charity shops, um, because I'm, I'm, I like going to the charity shop and trying to find books that are either out of print or really hard to get hold of. This was one such book. It's Archipelago by Monique Rofi, uh, which I don't think is out in print anymore, but I think might be coming back because obviously winning the Costa uh, overall book award, which just for clarity, I was a judge on. Um, I love the Mermaid of Black Hunt, and we we're doing some events with events with Monique over the coming weeks, and I can't wait. Um, but I really want to read all of her backlist. So when I spotted this, I was like, I have to have that. Um, and the other one that I got in a charity shop was, and I was quite shocked because this has literally only recently come out. Anita Ran is the right sort of girl, and I have to say, I really like Anita Rani as a presenter. I think actually on Woman's Hour now, she's my favourite. Um, and yeah, I've, I've liked everything that she's done over the years, but I wouldn't necessarily have been drawn to buying this until it came out in paperback. So when I saw it in hardback, I thought, right, do you know what? I'm gonna get it and risk it for a biscuit. Um, so that is what I've done. So there we go, a longer video today, but then lots of books to talk about. Uh, let me know in the comments down below any of your thoughts on any of these books. If you didn't like them, don't tell me now. Wait until I've read them and then we can have some delightful discourse about that. Um, but also let me know what you got in the month of August, be it from a bookshop, be it from a library, be it gifted from a lovely friend, anywhere and everywhere. Uh, tell me all about that in the comments down below and I will be back on Sunday for my vlog. Well, weekly reading vlog of the last week. Bye.